Cassidy Podell, a.k.a. DJ Cassidy, is a celebrity DJ in the truest sense. He's actually DJed the president's inauguration. He DJed Beyonce Knowles and Jay-Z's wedding, Kim Kardashian's wedding, all kinds of events. And he's here today to talk about being a high-profile DJ and the many facets of his career. Welcome. Hi, sir. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, it, it's really fascinating because you're the DJ of choice to some of the biggest celebrities in the world. Uh, even Oprah Winfrey, you DJed her her New Year's Eve party, and then you've also been able to select songs and to work with different brands: uh, Louis Vuitton, Victoria's Secret, Nike. How did you get there? Well, um, it's been a 20-year um, extravaganza. Um, starting when I was 10 years old. Um, asked my parents for uh, two turntables and a mixer for my birthday. And um, surprisingly, they bought me what I wanted. Right. And um, I DJed everywhere I possibly could, um, starting right then. I would DJ a uh, you know, friend's birthday party, the school carnival. Um, the talent shows, and then when it came, when you when you did that, when did it start to become? It starts uh, to became real towards the end of high school. Um, by doing parties for kids who promoted club type things in school, I began to meet um, the people around town in the city who were important, who were throwing the hot parties, um, and. Um, I got my break, I think, kind of my senior year of high school. Um, I really started doing um, um, some hot nights at the hot spots around town. And that's kind of when I went from kind of the high school circuit to the club circuit. And, to a brand. Um, it became real. The brand yeah. came a little later. Then it became real. I went from DJing for 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, and, you know, 17-year-olds who somehow worked their way around the law and threw parties <laughs> um, <laughs> where they probably were not really supposed to be throwing right, parties right. Um, to DJing for people 18 to through their, you know, 20s, probably up to the 40s. Um, and it became real. Suddenly I was in a real environment with real adults who knew music and I went from knowing the most to hoping I knew the most. Well, the, you obviously knew something that people wanted because when you did the president's inauguration, someone called it the nerd prom because basically <laughs> I think people thought that your presence that. brought that cultural re relevance that otherwise wouldn't be there, gave it an edge that wouldn't be there if you hadn't been there. Tell me what you think people are paying for when they hire you as a DJ. You know, when it started, I think they were paying for pure talent because there was nothing else there there was no name um, there was no um, history and there were no celebrities um, you know to back me um, as the celebrity thing started to happen um, other people always like to be involved in what the celebrities they look up to are involved in Mm -hmm. So certainly that became a part of it. And as I grew and really developed my name, um, the name starts to speak for itself. So I do believe when people hire me, whether it's for a celebrity event or a nightclub or anything else in between, um, they're not only getting the skill and the art, but they are getting the name and what comes with that name. When you do something for a President Obama or a Kim Kardashian, uh, do you get the sense that they're paying attention to what you're doing musically? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If, um, if at this point in my career I let the art kind of go and just, and just were able to rely on the history of the name at this point, um, it wouldn't work. Um, you have to put your money where your mouth is um, every minute of every party. It, it, it might, I, I want to disagree with you a little bit in that it might work with Barack Obama or Kim Kardashian, but it certainly is not going to work with Jay-Z 
or Diddy? Is it nerve wracking when the when you're DJing? I feel why you're saying, saying that. I hired you to do my wife's wedding. <laughs> you I feel be on why point. you're saying that, but you'd be surprised with the president and with Kim <laughs> how much they know and appreciate. Okay. You know the music, but certainly I could see where you're coming from. You feel thinking that a Jay Z with might... a Jay Z when you're DJing his. Party. Um, listen, every first time you feel a little, um, you know, nervousness about anything. If you didn't, um, you'd be made of steel. You know what I mean? So there's always that first time when you perform for someone new, um, and especially if they're the most powerful person on the planet, like the president or Jay Z, who's you know the greatest rapper in the world and it's um, um, there's always going to be that kind of first time um, you know butterflies um, but the second I get in the DJ booth it all changes um, the second I put the first record on and I say my first word into the microphone um, any of that goes away what kind of freedom do you get? Do you do, do people try to give you a playlist, or are you the guy that makes all the decisions about what you're going to play? You're, they're hiring DJ Cassidy. Is, do they get DJ Cassidy? Yes. Okay. A hundred percent of the time, it is very, very rare um, that someone hires me in advance and tries to give me um, some kind of musical direction. Um, it certainly doesn't happen at a nightclub whether in New York or, um, you know, Dubai. Um, there certainly doesn't tend to be direction there. Um, celebrity things, not really either. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but it's very rare. Normally, um, you know, if they're hiring me, they've either heard me or they've heard about me enough to let me be me. Right. And, you know, they know who you are. They know that you're a brand <laughs> now. Um, when you think about your job description, what would you say that is and how has it evolved hmm. over the years? That's an interesting question. Um, I've always looked at my job as rocking the party. And, you know, sometimes I get hired to rock a dance floor of a thousand people or rock a dance floor of maybe 5,000 people or perform on a stage in front of 60,000 people like I did in the park a few weeks ago with the Black Eyed Peas, or sometimes I'm DJing the opening of a new store for a couple hours, and it's a cocktail party. But I look at it like I have to rock this party no matter what kind of party it is. So that's for still your what core competency. Yeah, so I've always looked at my job as I need to move the people, and that can be physically, emotionally, but there's something that comes with music. In fact, what it's all about is making people feel. And, um, and no matter what kind of event I'm in, I want to make people feel. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the power of music um, is uh, extremely potent when it's loud and you're listening to it with hundreds or thousands of other people in a consolidated um, you know, space. Um, and, you know, music can make people feel sexy, excited, laid back, sad, aggressive. And it's always been, I think, my job, with the risk of sounding overly dramatic, to build those waves through the course of an hour, two hours, or three hours. Okay, DJ Cassidy, Cassidy Hodel, we look forward to your remixes and all the other parties that you're going to do in the future. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And Thank with you, DJ Cassidy, I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time.